Hey guys, we're here at the bee yard with um, Taylor Warren. She's with the Texas Apiary Inspection Service and she's here to inspect our bees. And I'm gonna ask her some questions um, to let you guys know what to expect when you're being inspected. I wanna look at some larva and some cat brood if I can. And so I'm getting this outside frame out first so that I can safely move all the frames in the middle. I don't have to worry about squishing the queen as much. Mm. And so I'm just moving these two, going straight to the middle. And I'll pull this one out to see if there's any brood on it. And here's your queen down here. Okay. So that's why I don't pull from the middle immediately. Right. So I don't risk squishing her. And I see lots of larvae in here. Good. So that's what I like to see. Different ages of larvae. Okay, so what are the number one concerns when you're doing an inspection? Like, what are you looking for? So I'm looking for disease. And a lot of the disease I can see based on how the larvae look. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking at these larvae and I see nice pearly white C-shaped larvae. And I'm not, I'm not seeing any signs of disease, not any melted down, discolored larvae, any mummified looking larvae. I'm also looking at these bees over here. Do their, are their wings all shriveled or are they not looking right? Do they have K-wing? Because K-wing might let me know that they have nosema mm -hmm. and deformed wing virus might let me, it might give me a clue that they have a high mite load. And of course I can run a mite sample um, to find out, but I might suspect parasitic mite syndrome if I see deformed wing virus. Okay. Um, it's just something I look at. And your queen is looking uh, pretty good. She might have bit of tattered wings at the very end. Uh -huh. uh, what would be the cause of that? She could just be older. Yeah. Okay. And so she's seen some things. <laughs> she's been around. Yeah, yeah. So in order to take a sample, I'm going to go to this next frame over here. Do we hold this one? Sure, that would be great. Yeah. Keep her nice and safe. Oh, did she just fall? I hope not. Oh, she did. Oh, gosh. It's okay. Okay, at least we saw it. <laughs> That's embarrassing. I'm sorry. That's okay. It happens to me, honestly, all the time. This is the first queen oh, I've not, dropped. Oh, oh, she just went into the wrong hive. Okay, okay she came out. Come there, lady. All right, here we go. Okay, I'm gonna go that way. <laughs> not up on me. Come on, go to your hive. There you go. There okay, you go. So okay. now I'll hand you this now frame. Hold okay. Hold. Okay. <laughs> and I'm gonna get this frame. So I know she's not on. Okay, so I see some capped brood on this frame which is nice. I didn't see mm -hmm. much or any cat brood on that other one. There's also some larvae. The larvae are looking good. And I also see some eggs in the center. So she's filled in, good. Uh, which, is, which is good to see. Um, because at first glance, it might look kind of spotty. But when you look where there are spaces, she's filled it in with either eggs or larvae. Hmm. And we see they're capping over this larva, it looks like. Why is it so much darker? The comb? No, I guess it's because of the comb, yeah? The older, it's the older. older comb. Yeah, yeah. And just as they have brood in the comb, it just gets darker. And that's why darker comb um, can be a source of disease. Just hmm. because more larvae have been through it. So if any diseased larvae have been through it, there might be remaining bacteria or viruses. Right, that makes sense. And that's sense. not to say it's going to be diseased. It's just, it can be a higher risk. But of course, it's not practical to replace, as a commercial operator, to replace comb right. every year or two years. No. So I'm looking at the bees. While they're in here, they're not going to go anywhere, or at least not a half a cup of them. <laughs> and you're doing a mite test. Yes. yes. This is the alcohol wash. Yes. So I'm tipping them into the side, taking my half cup scoop leveling it off because I don't want a heaping scoop and that should be about 300 bees. And so then I'm going to take these guys, dump them back. Mm -hmm. We can put that frame back in the hive. Okay. Queen on there now. Where is she? Person. Yep, I see her. She's yep. kind of down at the bottom. So, I'm just okay. gonna... so if you want to put her facing that way, yeah, we won't push her. So what happens if you find something like American Falbrood? 
So our office has not found American fowl brood in five or six years. That's a good thing. Yeah, now that awesome. definitely does not mean that it doesn't exist okay. here in Texas. It definitely does. There are beekeepers who know what it looks like and I'm sure they handle it. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, if we you... have people who suspect they have American fowl brood, but we try to respond to those very quickly. Uh -huh. And so if we were to find out that there was American fowl brood, um, at an apiary, we would uh, probably implement a quarantine so those bees can't go anywhere. Okay. And then we would send extra tests off to the lab. So we've got these little tests. This one's for a European fowl brood because that's, we see that pretty commonly. So I carry these around, but we also have one for American fowl brood. And I believe uh, Man Lake sells them for a couple of bucks and they're really great they essentially work like a pregnancy test okay you scoop out the larvae that you suspect are sick or that don't look right and then you put them into a bottle and there's like a pipette in there so and you shake this bottle around it's got some little metal balls in it and a buffer solution so you shake it for 20 seconds you take the pipette suck out some of the the liquid right and then drip three drops into this little well and then the liquid works its way across and if there's two lines it's positive it's pregnant one line is <laughs> negative would you like to look sure. at this to see if you see her just to double check so if you were to find american fowl brood what do you do with the equipment it, it, the whole apiary goes under quarantine and then what okay yeah so it goes under quarantine then we take extra samples that we send off to a usda lab to double check Okay. Because these aren't these tests aren't a hundred percent. They're a very good indicator. Yeah. But they aren't a hundred percent. We want to be very sure. Right. So we send the tests off to the USDA lab. Once we have confirmed results, we come back, and then we destroy destroy that hive. To be using and we okay. look very thoroughly through all the other hives. Right. Uh, with American, we might look through all the hives within a yard to confirm that no other hot. Uh, colonies have it okay uh, how contagious is it between hives well that's a good I, question i'm not sure if yeah. positive you know for sure because how it's, we haven't seen it yeah. in so long i haven't been here long enough for sure to see it okay. um but it can form a spore mm -hmm. so if the spores are being moved around between hives the bees won't necessarily show any symptoms until whenever that spore goes into its active oh, okay. state Okay. And then you'll start seeing some issues. Right. Here. I'll check the tub when I shake. Interesting. Yeah, you're good though. Just poking through the piles. And I don't see her. <laughs> fowl brood we we don't quarantine but we treat it fairly similar to American fowl brood in that uh, we'll go back and confirm some tests we don't do that with the USDA lab but we do that in our office <clears throat> what's the cause of the European it's a bacteria Is but it? that bacteria doesn't form a spore because the spore I I tend to think of it like a, a nut mm -hmm. with a hard shell on the outside and that nut as long as it stays closed will stay as one solid nut for a long time and okay. this bacterial spore can stay for 35 years in wow. spore form it's a long Supposedly. time yeah yeah, yeah. Um, so it just stays in that solid form and once it gets the right conditions the perfect conditions then it, will it opens open up, up and it becomes contagious oh, okay and it can make bees sick So what are the number one issues whenever you are doing inspections? What is the most common thing that you find besides small hive beetles? <laughs> yeah. Well, and it depends on the time of the year. Around yeah. springtime in inspections, I saw a lot of chalk brood, oh, okay. a pretty good amount of European fowl brood, but I've still right. found European fowl brood in the fall. Okay. Um, just last spring though, chalk brood and European fowl brood were pretty common. 
Um, and of course, there's other viral and bacterial diseases that I'm sure are not identified yet. Right. And so they might present like European foul brood, uh, but we take samples and it comes back negative. And it's just kind of like, well, you know, if, if we don't know what it is, we don't know what it is. Your best bet is to feed, 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 and make sure they have all the resources to thrive. Kind of make a circular motion okay. with my hand. It's spinning in there and the mites should fall down to the bottom.